Hey, Brigitte, how's things going? Good. How are you? Doing very well, thanks. Um, I guess we can get started by asking about your, your early life. Um, still letting people in, coming from Germany to the United States. You mean my early photography life? Yes. In general? Yes. Yeah. Oh, whichever uh, you want to tell us about. It's yeah. always good to know all about our people. Actually, I haven't done work for 30 years in, in the middle. Mm -hmm. I was interested in photography. I did black and white. I, I did darkroom work. I have some amazing, uh, amazing images. I have a lost negative that one of my favorite negatives that I lost that I have a big print of. And that's about the size of it for my early photography life. Uh, I came uh, to the United States in 1984 mm -hmm. and uh, had a family. And I was always interested in the arts. Uh, I did, uh, while, I had, I, I, while I was raising my family, I was doing more uh, fine art, painting, pastels, oils, so forth. And uh, that's really where a lot of my inspiration comes from, is from fine art. Do you have uh, artists that really consider your big influences? Yes. Um, I was really influenced by um, the Impressionists, uh, Monet, um, William Turner, the light that he, you know, the, the, the whole, mm -hmm. the lighting is mostly, and the brush strokes is something that really intrigued me. Also the, I don't know, there's like a directional, something directional going on with them. And that's, that's what I try to achieve in, in some of my, at least one of my latest works, the ones from Holland where, you know, you have the moving, um, grass mm -hmm. that's something that that is close to my heart are there photographers that influence you yes um all the west coast photographers of course i mean right in the middle of it mm -hmm. um if it comes to quality or create creativity um you know roman kim kim weston ray Uji, he's a master printer i learn so much from him and he's a very and they're all very supportive yes um i, I know all of those guys yes and um but earlier on it before i came here it was more like michael kenna lenotre's gardens you know that goes really deep blacks and mm -hmm. light that's and of course he shoots hasselblad um too and that's uh i have a lot in common there so that those are some of uh, the ones i like and uh pepe marizo um as far as street photographer even though i don't do much of that but i'm i'm just intrigued by the old world let's say <laughs> Yeah, I, I keep in with my images, I keep trying to go back to the old world, to the quiet, yeah. to the still, to the non-crazy, <laughs> not what we have now. <laughs> <clears throat> so you're, you're a film photographer, primarily Hasselblad? Yes. Is there a particular awesome. film that you go to or does it vary by subject? No, I, I use uh, mostly Tri-X, Kodak Tri-X. Mm -hmm. Same developer too? Uh, I was using HC 110 for a long time. I've had the, the most horrible time with it recently. I don't know. They changed their formula. Now it's liquid. In Europe, the, the, um, the liquid is thinner. So I always, you know, I spend a lot of time in Europe. So when I develop over there, I always have to be careful that the times are different. So I also like to use Pyro PMK. Mm-hmm. What about for your printing? Is there a go-to paper? Yes, I, I use uh, Ilford Warm Tone, fiber-based almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. So do you know what, how the finished photo is going to look before you make your exposure? Do you pre-visualize? <clears throat> well, not before I get out of the house, <laughs> but when <laughs> I'm there, I, I know when I push the trigger when I got something. Uh -huh. And it's mostly when I'm really in touch with what goes on at the, at the scene and I'm right in it, I, 
I usually do a great job. If I'm in a hurry or if I'm not all together there, I, it just doesn't, it never works for me. So for you, is photography a process or a product? Which is the more important part? Process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoy the process. I, I, I enjoy everything from, from the beginning to the end. I mean, there's a lot of parts because I do everything by myself. I, I develop my own film, I print, I spot, I mount and I frame, you know, I mean, that's uh, one man, one, one woman job. <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. Uh, not a lot of us do the whole process anymore. Um, are you all silver based or do you do any alternative processes? I like to dabble. I have done everything from cyanotype, salt prints, um, Van Dyke, platinum, <clears throat> wet plate collodion. I just want to understand uh, the process better. And I want to understand what other people do. It, it, that goes back to even when I try to um, learn an instrument or something just for a whole year, just to re experience how hard it is mm -hmm. so I can appreciate it more. With Are you a musician too? Uh, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say I'm a musician. I, I, I love music. Um, I played the piano for a while and the flute. And, and I thought the flute was such a, a relaxing thing to do until I realized you need so much freaking air. <laughs> it's not <laughs> relaxing at all when you really get to, to the hard pieces. So, but I did my thing and I, and I now can appreciate music so much more. Great. So for people who are new here, uh, please feel free to jump in and ask questions. You can type them in the chat or you can unmute and ask. I see Newler has his hand up already. The question I have is, John asked the question, which is more important, the process or the product? But there's something else. That there's the process, there's the product, and, and then there's the, the final result. Which is more, more important, the product, the final result? Or the process they're all important i um if you don't appreciate the final results then the process i mean the process i love the process and I, that's a tough question mm -hmm. uh, welcome to I my would world you'll say the process because it is so once it's done it's, it's almost well Then what do you do if you have all products you know you want to keep doing it you want to keep working you want to keep being in the process so i would say the process is more important than the result. no but but there's but between the process and the product is also uh uh what it's what it's becoming in other words as you as you're working the process if all of a sudden you you see it and you don't like it you'll abandon it right no, never. <laughs> In other words, if, even if you don't like it as it as it's as you're processing it, you'll continue to the end. You mean like if I have a picture that I'm not happy with when I uh, develop film, or you're, you're talking about print process now because print, that's a different thing. If print process, print process. Um, no, I'm forever a perfectionist. I I I do it until the cows come home. I I just I can't okay. stop. I, I want to get it the way I want it. And that takes sometimes forever, but I keep trying. Right. Yeah. So I noticed your bio picture was taken by Michelle Magdalene and Maddox, I assume a relative. That's my daughter. Daughter. <clears throat> yeah, you should check out her work. She is uh, an amazing photographer. We actually inspire each other. Hmm. Um, I inspired her to become a photographer because of my very early work. And then she went to Brooks and became a professional photographer. And then I just saw her do all the fun, creative things. And <clears throat> for instance, on my Facebook page, the, the cover page is a Mother Day shoot that she did with me. Nice. She just took a chair on top of her head, walked down the street like a Chippendale chair. She walked down the street to the beach. She put the grass, she put the chair uh, laying down. And then she said, sit in the chair. 
And I'm like, what do you mean? The chair is laying down. He says, yeah, right. That's exactly right. That's what I want. <laughs> and those are the kinds of crazy things that she does. And she really inspired me to get back into photography, um, and uh, which was in, in earnest 10 years ago. So is she also in California? Yes, she's in the same town in Pacific Grove. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Hmm. So she's I Magdalena, Michelle Magdalena Maddox. She's uh, uh, Yeah, see, so she a photographs a lot of people. Nudes, mostly. Yeah, do you photograph people at all? or? You... I do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I... Um, I do some portraiture, but uh, what interests me more is uh, like when I'm in Italy and I see all the old people sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. I really want to photograph the old world. And that's, I do a lot of pictures of, of uh, I make pictures of old people and yeah. <laughs> uh, the old world, you know, I, um, and I'm, and I keep being intrigued by couples, you know, how people mm -hmm. get together and I want to someday want to do a series in Italy on that because they're the most interesting couples yelling at each other. And <laughs> how, how do you incorporate the impressionism that you like with uh, the black and white that I only saw black and white on your website. I didn't see yes. any color, but how do you incorporate uh, the impressionism uh, into your black and white? If you look at my latest um, image, I'll, I'll hold it up. This is the, uh, the one okay. that okay. I did in Holland. And if you look at all the grass and the brush strokes, that's how, that's what, uh, you know, it's, it's that, it's not the color. Of course, Impressionism is all about color. But for me, it was more about the brush strokes, the movements, the, the light. Van Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh. Well, he's all he's all about color too. Um, well, not, it, well, I love him, but I don't know that I would, uh, um, because his brush strokes are a little bit more um, even. Monet and Renoir they kind of mixed up the colors, so it's more. Um, I don't know. It's like Turner, you know. There's more mixing going on and shades. Blending, blending. Blending, yes, thank yeah. you. I am not a native English speaker, so please. <laughs> Either am I. Either am I. Yeah. Okay. So Kathy Manley's asking in the chat, how do you develop design a long-term project? They develop themselves, really. Um, I, I shoot uh, images, and when I have a show, I... Uh, or if, if, you know, more, I, it's like I'm discovering myself. I, I see that there's a theme going on and then I, I follow that. It's not like I think of a theme and then uh, execute it. It comes to me naturally and then I, I do more of that and then that becomes a project. Are you sponsored? Pardon? Are you sponsored? No. You want to sponsor me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> there's, sure. a patreon, there's a patreon link on my website if you want to sponsor. i would need some sponsors yes Birgit, I, I see uh, just happened to glancing through your facebook page and i see that your daughter uh, has a video here so uh, does that mean that she has not entirely embraced shooting all film but has gone to digital as opposed to what you do oh, yes well she does she's a professional uh well, she does digital for her for professional photography um, and her fine art is a completely different matter and she still shoots film for that. She has really intricate shoots with milk and building scaffolding and shooting down. I mean, it, she goes all out on it, on that. So Jeff has pointed out an interesting thing that um, your webpage, Stonehouse Gallery, doesn't really mention you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's part of my persona. I, I I'm kind of under the under the radar all the time, uh, and that's kind of part of the mystery. I that intrigues me. I um I don't put myself out a lot. <clears throat> Stonehouse Gallery. Uh, I I am spend, I do spend six months at least in Europe. You know, either in Italy or Germany, and I do want a stone house someday. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my way of uh, manifesting that. So I have something stone house until I get the stone house. And you also have Maddox design. Yes, I'm a graphic designer by trade. That's my bread and butter. I learned, uh, you know, I come from I come from a printing background. So I have a really fine eye for even color shift when I, it comes to toning, you know, I can see the slightest color shift that I might not be happy with because, you know, if I have a show and all the prints are supposed to be toned the same way, I, I will not use, you know, three quarters of it because it just don't go together. It's some, mm -hmm. and it's so hard to achieve that. It's so hard to achieve the toning because, you know, if the, paper is in the water longer if the if you know the temperature changes on the toner it just changes immediately and it's it's really tough to get it consistent but it's something i strive for so you're, so you're still doing design work i think you mentioned to me that you're working on some books with photographers and you do websites too yes yes i do and i and i am working on kim weston's new book um that's coming out 420 page book wow that is an amazing feat. I mean, his, he's so prolific. He, <laughs> he has so many images and working on the book, you know, usually I get tired when it comes down to the commas and, and, and uh, but I'm not tired reading. There's quite a bit to read, but there's, no, it, there's a lot of images, history. So mm -hmm. I, I enjoy, I enjoy that a lot. Um, Carlos Diaz is asking why you don't use digital. Because I'm a graphic designer and I spend too much in front of the computer already. Uh, I don't, uh, I, I like the tactile feeling of, you know, touching paper, cutting paper. Uh, it, I'm, I don't like, uh, even though here this is a Zoom meeting, I don't like the virtual world. I, mm -hmm. I want to be in the real world, in the natural world. And that includes being in the dark room. It is so much easier to work with uh, digital media because you can make it, cons you know, I'll put a filter on something and it's exactly the same for all of all of the images, which is great. But to reproduce that in the dark room is, is really hard, but yet I do it, you know, I, I mm -hmm. enjoy it still. I always say, you know, if <clears throat> in 20 or 30 years, I'll, I'll do digital negatives and I'll make platinum prints, you know, something mm -hmm. that's a little bit easier, but yeah, I I used to think of doing my darkroom work as, as learning a dance. You know, if I wanted to repeat something, I just find the way I dodge and burn with hands and just move around and try to get this it rhythm is. going and try to repeat it for the next one. Yeah. And there's something very comforting about that because um, it, it is a little bit more real and mm -hmm. uh, I, I enjoy that. So Jim Brasher is asking, does your photography influence your design work? It, it goes back and forth. I mean, if you have a certain eye and aesthetics and placement that uh, that goes together. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my, my experience as a working in, in, in printing certainly has taught me how to print in the dark room, how to achieve a certain quality. So it goes, it, it, it feeds each other, I think. Yeah. So it seems like you travel a lot. Have you been able to travel this past year with COVID going on or? Yes. Oh. Yes, I have because I am a, a German citizen. Oh. So I can go back to Germany anytime I want. And then when the restrictions were where Europeans couldn't come to America, I have a green card that I can come back here. But I am working on my citizenship this year. That's something mm -hmm. after 30 years, finally. I'm just tired <laughs> of renewing my... My, my green card costs 500 freaking dollars to renew the card wow. every 10 years. I said, okay, that's enough of that already. <laughs> so speaking of Germany, David Mark says you have a show coming up next year. Yes. Uh, at or later the this year. Gallery in Bad Homburg. Uh, he's uh, here present. <clears throat> he has a very uh, nice gallery. He's a super nice guy. I'm very thrilled. Hi, Mark. To, um, to exhibit, uh, to have a solo show. That would be my second solo show. <clears throat> oh, it's going to be late spring now with COVID, you know, we mm -hmm. both were shooting for late spring, early summer. We'll see how it goes. 
Yeah. When you travel between uh, Europe and uh, the States, do you notice any great difference in the, the way the photography is done and uh, how it's looked upon? Um, the only big difference I see that in Europe, photography is a little bit more um, like in, in America or specifically on the West Coast, you have a lot of support, photographers support each other. And in Europe, in the art world in general, it's a little bit more competitive where you wouldn't want to be seen going to some other artist's show. Well. That's my experience from you know 30 years ago. Now, I don't know um, now, but I do uh, visit a lot of uh, uh, photographic exhibits in Genova and uh, it seems, you know, I mean, it seems the same. It, it uh, as far as the the quality or the the genres. I mean, everybody, you know, that's that's something in the art world that that's worldwide. I think not specific to California, or, but just the way artists uh, interact with each other. I think is different. Yeah, we've got yeah. quite an international audience today here. Uh, let's see, we got Martin in Scotland, David Mark is in Germany, Julie's in Ireland. So um, if any of you want to chime in on differences you think you see between US photographers and, and European, please feel free to, to mention well, it. Certainly in the UK, uh, you know, you, you get the distinct feeling that, uh, you know, they still have this opinion that photography definitely is an art. Um, whereas, you know, when I do go to California and particularly to Caramel, it's, you know, treated very much on a level with any other form of art. And yeah. I think that's a big difference between Europe and the States. And, and I think as, as Big had said, um, there's a much more cooperative effort, particularly on the West Coast than in Europe. And, and mm -hmm. she's right. Um, artists are more, they're competitive with each other. Um, rather than cooperative, I, it's unfortunate. I I can't change it, but um, I wish it would change. Everybody seems to be going back to the West Coast. West, what what happened to the East Coast? <laughs> You're all a bunch of commercial people. You don't do art anymore. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I, uh, you know, I don't know about that. As I said, I I, I grew think, up on I the think, East Coast. I think Irving Penn and. And uh, uh, Avedon and uh, Jimmy Moore and and uh, you know a lot of a lot of you know East Coast photographers, the uh, living and dead, uh, would say that um, uh, their 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 work was very influential in the in the history of um, at least American photography. And Kathy says East Coast is very competitive. Mm. Yeah, but that's what keeps us going. Uh huh. Uh, so, Big, I mean, you're you're in two galleries um, that are nearby to each other. I think you're in um, was it Photo West in Carmel? Yeah, and, they have one of my prints and, uh, and the gosh, what is the gallery? Levin Gallery. Yeah, the Levin Levin Gallery in Monterey. That's an interesting place. I got yes. to visit it a couple of years ago. Oh yes, there's. <laughs> hundreds and upon hundred he has everything if you want to have print see prints from every artist ever made you go to you go to well the levin gallery and um brooke um gosh i'm terrible with names I, I i yeah i have their card around here somewhere i don't remember but if they share the space still yes they do yeah and one of them was in, lives in la and travels back and forth if i remember yeah. correctly well i don't know if he travels much uh, anymore he he is a lawyer was a lawyer also and mm -hmm. uh, he, he's retiring so he might be just in carmel now okay yeah it's a pretty amazing gallery if you're ever in in that area i mean there's just stacks of prints back to back of anything you've ever heard of or want to see he's got it there Got such a quiet crowd today. Does anyone have questions? I, I, do you have a representative? No, I don't. Do you are you are you signed with a particular gallery in Europe? 
or the United States? No, I'm not. And and how, how do you market yourself? How do I work at myself? No, market. 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 So. Oh, how do I market myself? Uh, I haven't done much marketing. I, um, I have my shows. I, you know, I do Facebook posts, social media, basically. But other than that, um, I just, I'm going to take this show uh, after I, the, the show is done in, in, in Bad Homburg. I have this show, ha I have to print this in, in um, European measurements. So it's going to be 60, 50, and 40 centimeters, which is not quite 24, 20, and 16 inches. It's just a mm -hmm. little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So I, I, am ha I have special uh, boards cut to that size now so that I can have a whole show in that size. And then I will take the show um, around. You know, I'll try to go to... Baden-Baden is uh, close to where I, I'm from in Germany. There, there's a, a new uh, galleries coming up there. So I'll, I'll ask them and, you know. Yeah. Right next, uh, so do you have some work you can show us now? Yes. Uh, I, I Actually, it's a slideshow. Um, oh, great. It's four minutes long, but I figured that gives me... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's to take it down a few notches, you know, that's what I did it slowly on purpose, because that's what my art is all about. It is to look at an image, um, be with it, um, slow down, you know, we, we are going way too fast here, everybody is. And I, that's one of my prime uh, drives is to create something that just by looking at it, you will, you know, relax have some you know be be, be in it so I'll, I'll play it right now so great i have to share my screen though right yep, that always helps <laughs> <laughs> do i have to push something specifically to, to no, share does my... it have sound oh, yeah, with their screen okay hold on does it have sound with it it should yeah so if, and when you're on the share screen um screen it's going to say allow audio is it coming through i see your website right now yep this was my show that i had a couple of years ago
That was great. Hope nobody fell asleep. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I see you're, you're, are you really drawn to reflections or do you just come across them? Uh, no, I am. I actually, I, I would have to say uh, Roman uh, Lawrence is, you know, I, he really influ influenced me on that part because he, you know, the tones is, is really, um, how would you say, now I lost my, now I, I'm so <laughs> relaxed, I lost my, 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 my words here. Anyway, he influenced me in that part, um, just the reflections. I actually, one of the galleries uh, wouldn't take me because my work is too similar. Huh, interesting. He was already represented. And I think that's nice that galleries look out for the artists mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, I was going to ask something that Julie also said. How do you come up with the titles for your images? Oh, my and son. That, what's that? <laughs> my son. My son huh. is a writer and he, yeah, he, we work together on it and uh, I tell him what my feelings are about it and he just can put it into words so much better. I'm not a word person. <laughs> yeah, I always have a tough time trying to give a name to a photo. Um, Bruce Porter is asking can you, if you can describe your toning method. And you said you use Ilford WT exclusively. What print developer? Uh, I used to use LPD. Um, and then I, when I go over to Ryuji's to print, because he had, he, you know, I, I can print large, the larger images I have to print at his house. And he uses Dectal. So I, ha I also oh. use between those two, Dectal and LPD. And my, tone, my toner uh, was uh, Kodak Brown Toner. And I had several bottles, but I am now on my last bottle and I, I was a little horrified because for the show, I need to reproduce the same because I have added all the images from last year, which is the four corners images and the Holland pictures because that's I traveled last year um, to those places. And uh, so I made my own. I, I successfully made my own toner. Um, it's the Kodak T8. Uh, toner and it's it, it came out perfectly it, it's exactly the same I um, though you can here I have I've toned this uh, yesterday here and um, I, I toned a print that I had previously printed and it uh, was I, I used a different developer at different times different this or that and it came out a lot redder you know like there's the there's a little bit more red, there's a little bit more yellow in, in the in the tone. And that's, it's hard to get consistent that way, like I said earlier. How often do you, um, do you go out and shoot? And what is your uh, process of finding locations? Do you stay there for the whole day, keep going back over years? Or, or what do you do? There's places I go back to every year. For instance, the image I just showed, the right of Chevron. It's one of my favorite places in Germany. And when I'm back in Germany, I usually leave in May. I will go back to that place and shoot it again. Like Monet would, you know, paint the um, the haystacks in every different light. I I, I kind of do the same thing with with some of the locations that I really like. But other than that, I, um, I just go for it. I take my camera everywhere and something, you know, I, I don't do a lot of scouting. Um, when we went to Holland, we had bicycles and a VW van and we could just hop on the bikes, put the camera gear in the basket and off we go. And then, you know, you would have never reached some of those places by car. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I don't like to carry heavy equipment. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. I probably be, would be shooting a four by five, but <laughs> uh, Hasselblad is heavy enough. Do you carry multiple, multiple lenses or just one lens with you usually? Uh, I carry uh, both the 80 and the 50 millimeter, but to be honest with you, I mostly use the, the 80. Mm -hmm. um, I, and then I'm tired and I used to take the 150 with me. <laughs> I had three lenses with me and I would never use the 150. So I just stopped taking it. How many frames might you shoot in a day? How many frames? How many frames? images? Um, that depends. If I have a, um, like on that day, like the, uh, the trees that reflect in the water as above, so below, 
I, I shot two roles because um, I, I just couldn't get enough of the light and, and it was in the winter, um, this apple orchard was flooded and you know, I was standing in there with my rubber boots. It's just uh, in the stories, there's so many stories and Mark uh, will appreciate the story part. 120 film or 220? Hello, what? 120 or 220? 120. But I don't shoot, I, I might show, shoot a roll or two, but uh, usually not more than that. I, uh, mm -hmm. When we were at Four Corners, of course, traveling quite a bit, I might, uh, you know, if, if I shoot three rolls, it'd be much, a lot. So I this is a question. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching a class this semester, and last week we had a discussion, even though it's a lighting class, about loading reels for 120. You're a metal or plastic <laughs> reel person. I started out with metal. Uh, I'm now with plastic. Okay. Why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, to begin with, I traveling to Europe. You know, taking the the developing tanks with me. It's just it's about weight, and then I started getting used to it, and now I I, I just use that. You know, it works. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask that presumably you're developing your film on location, well, where you are. If you're in Germany, you do it in Germany. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, Though when I'm in Italy, I uh, have my, uh, my negatives developed by a guy in Geneva because he does such good work. He, you know, he'll do whatever if I ask for pyro PMK and he's uh, super clean. Um, I don't know that I could, uh, you know, I don't have any chemistry in, in Italy. I do, um, I did some alternative process in Italy and I also uh, started, um, I have a little exhibit in Cinque Terre where I, this is where I, I spend a lot of my time. And so how, um, how do you dry your, your negatives when you're out traveling? dry them dry them, keep them clean keep the dust off them and... oh well that's what i'm saying in in germany i you know i'm in the house but in mm -hmm. um in italy like i said i have my negatives developed yeah. by this guy in, in, in Geneva. and i don't have a, a drying uh whatever it's called drying closet or yeah closet or something i was just it's been a long time since i've done film really I, no i just I... keep my dark room really clean and mm -hmm. um they're, they're fine. I mean, I, I, I have never had any problem. Yeah. Do you ever shoot four by five if you're working in local? I have done four by five, yes. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, I did some collodion work uh, when, I, when I dabbled with that a little bit. But, and I took the, the four by five with me to the four corners. And I tell you, I just, it doesn't work for me. I don't know what it is. Is I, it the square versus the almost yeah. square? I just see square. I wanna, I wanna uh, put it back. And even the four by five, like like this image here, it's actually the, done by a four by five, mm -hmm. but I cropped it square because that's sure. just how I. That's just how I see. I mean, you can mm -hmm. put a mask in the four by five, and then you have your square. <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I see Michael's. So many questions <laughs> rolling around in my empty head that um, um, would you ever consider, just hear me for a minute, <laughs> would you ever consider um, uh, doing something in, in digital? Uh, uh, how's the blood? I don't care. You want square? You want square? Would yeah. you ever, con you know? Yeah, I, I would. I, I uh, like I said, when I if I get to be much older and have a, a much easier time, because it is very time consuming and very, uh, it's also expensive, you know, like, especially the toning, I can have 20 prints and, um, and they look perfectly fine in black and white, and I tone them and I'm not happy with it, you know, and that's, that's kind mm -hmm. of a shame, but it's what I, 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 I really like to be consistent. Um, I thought I thought that I would actually just do maybe a selenium toning or, or something that's a little bit more predictable, you know, to have a, a lower uh, dilution and having it have there be no color shift just for um, preserving the print. For archival, yeah. 
yeah, for archival purposes. Uh, I might do that later. Um, you know, I change. I uh, um, I might get tired. Like already, I'm thinking that. Um, well, you know, the the toning. You know, I like the dark chocolate tone. Mm -hmm. I just want to eat the print. That's that's <laughs> the true sign when I like something. I want to eat it. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> but to achieve that is really hard. And and I guess I I just always been. Uh, somebody that would pick the hard part versus the easy way just because I, 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 I want I, I want to ask another question but I need to have it in, interpolated by Jeff Shiwi for a minute is Jeff still on Jeff is there okay so if she settles into a um a system that she likes digitally, and then she settles into a particular system that she likes her images to look like, can that all be achieved just by setting up the, uh, the, the, uh, the color, whatever, whatever uh, of, of the, the cameras and the, um, digital printers are you asking me your name shiwi yeah okay then it's you fuck you no more okay love you <laughs> um so um no can she can motivation. she achieve what i can she achieve the given same the motivation she could get exactly in digital what she gets in print with the exception of one thing it's a different process. And okay. some photographers uh, are as much in love with the process as they are with the images that the process produces. She enjoys the process of producing her images her way. And I don't think that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bridget, uh, even if you could get exactly the same easier you wouldn't be all that highly motivated to do it. Right, because I, you're right, because it is the process and I, and I like um, being in the dark room. I, I don't like to sit in front of a computer. I sit in, the comp in front of the computer so much working the graphic design that I, I don't wanna look at a screen anymore. I wanna see real, uh, you know, I want to work with real things and not to say, I mean, you could print uh, things, you could print digitally uh, and, uh, and I have done some digital work. Um, but but your you daughter did you have a pain look on your face when you said, <laughs> I have done some digital work. Did I, did I make a bad face? Yes. <laughs> no, you had a. Well, yeah, I know, well, thank you. Yeah, you, you enjoy doing what you do, yes. which is why you do it as exactly. much as to get the image that uh, you end up with. Exactly. And I would never say that, you know, like digital, the quality is, is so close nowadays. I wouldn't say, well, digi you know, analog is better. Uh, for me, it's better. I like the product. I like the feel, and um, that's well, why you, I do it. but you did, but you did also say that as you get older, older, right? yeah, right? <laughs> that um, you, you you'll have to make changes. You know, Michelangelo had to do the same thing. He didn't want to climb up with that scaffolding to do ceilings and stuff, so he was able to instruct assistants to do it his way, and if they didn't do it exactly his way. He made them take, you know, erase it and do it over again. Well, Michelangelo didn't like painting so much. He liked sculpting. Well, and okay. He was, but that... It was, a, it was uh, the Vatican punished him. Yes. That was a punishment that he got to, to paint the Sistine Chapel. That's why there's some really grotesque images up there. But you like you graphic like design better than you like photography. <laughs> No, I don't like design better. I, I like photography better, but there's a, there's, you know, it's being artistic, it's being creative. That's, that's the big. Uh, so John okay, Shields is, is just saying in chat though, but as a retired toxicologist an advantage of digital is you're not less, is that you're less likely to poison yourself 
with selenium and things like that. Yeah, Whoa. you should have seen me yesterday with the with the respirator on and the and the gloves and everything else. I mean, it's it's not uh, it, it's it can be dangerous, and especially I have a really small dark room. I have a window in there, but uh, I think I might uh, move the whole thing outside too because. <laughs> Especially mixing the chemicals. I'll mix the chemicals outside next mm -hmm. time. Because, Don't you think that you could become more pr more productive creating rather than, and I know where I'm going to go with this, uh, more more productive creating images uh, on, on on analog in the camera than you can in the darkroom? Okay, repeat that question. Yeah, I didn't get that either. Uh, with the camera, you can go around and making all sorts of images that strike our fancy. But once you're in the dark room, you then have to go back and now process those images that you shot with the camera. Can't a dark room technician uh, do it uh, a lot more efficiently and perhaps better than you yourself? No. And then, uh, which allows you to go out and take more images. No, because a lot of stuff happens in the dark room. I, it, um, there's a, you know, your expression of the, of the photograph, it's what, whatever, some prints are straight, like the, the, as above, so below, there's hardly, that's the picture. That's, that, that's in, in, in the bag. That's how, it, that's how it came out. But other images, you know, I want to dodge or burn or, or bring out, you know, work with the light to, to enhance it or to, and, and we've just had uh, the conversation last week where somebody said, well, you, nature doesn't need to be enhanced, uh, which is true if you want to have a, a pure um, representation of what you, what was in front of you. But I, I really like to change my images to be moody and, and mysterious uh, a lot of times that and that happens with long exposure if you do a long exposure on an image that's not how nature looks like you're never going to see the the you know the water white like that or it looks like ice or like fog you won't see that with your eyes that happens in the camera and that's something that i that i really enjoy and if you can do that in camera then you can also do it in the dark room there's no um, no reason why you can't change something the way you see it for me. I think what Michael is failing to understand is that component of love of the process. Oh, well. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I don't fail to see it because, because I did enough. Well, no, um, there is a big difference. When I, one of the big problems I had um, turning commercial was um, what you were talking about is turning the darkroom work over to a photo lab because I didn't have time to spend the time in the darkroom because I could make more money shooting than I could printing. So I had to learn how to let go of the process and work with a photo lab. Uh, and, and, but it's helpful if you know exactly what you want. But, but that's the before they thing, invented grease pencils. If you love the process, you're doing that as much for the process as the resulting image so why would you give up the process to somebody else to enjoy because you enjoy it yes i, I agree with that yeah so going back to your history bruce porter is asking what brought you to america in the 80s and as a former printer a press operator he's curious about what kind of printing you were involved in oh gosh well <laughs> when i was 15 i was a an apprentice oh hold on i'm gonna have to one thing i didn't think about my battery is low. I have to before oh. you. Take it. <laughs> what brought me to America? Okay, as an eighteen-year-old, I put on a backpack and I headed for. California, where I spent three months uh, traveling, going down to Baja, uh, just traveling. I've been traveling since I was uh, 15. 
just uh, you know, Eurorail, a month of Eurorail, you know, going all over Europe and then uh, then to America. So that was in uh, 81, I think I went for the first time. The press, um, I didn't work on, well, I learned how to use a press, but I was in pre-press. So I have a, uh, I'm, I have a, what do you call it? They don't have apprenticeships in America, so there's no equivalent language for it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I had a three-year apprenticeship where I learned pre-press and I worked in the dark room and I had to burn, you know, screens, 10%, 20%, 30% screens uh, with a registered system. I spend all day in the dark room and that's, that's a little bit reminiscent for me. And I got into black and white photography and I, and I remember that time working in the dark room and I, and I just enjoy being in there. Uh, but a, a specific press, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So Jim Brachier is asking, how many of us need our process to find our path to the image that we want to create? How many of us need our process to find our path to the images we want to create? It's getting into deep discussions now. <laughs> um yeah you know it's a, a photography is a self-discovery in a way you you learn how you tick but I, at least i do with the images that i that i uh mm -hmm. take i as a very young girl i painted oil and i and i remember painting the scene of trees and a little you know where the light was shining in and there was a sort of a, you know, you, you become creative, you, you learn to be creative and you're so proud of yourself that you, 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 you produce something. And I guess that's, you keep doing that. You keep mm -hmm. wanting to come up with new creativity to, to create something from scratch is an amazing feeling. And that's, uh, that's you know, part of the process because if I'm in the dark room and I, you know, I, I burn um, in different things, the images never come out the same like they would in digital. Each one is slightly different. You know, I can't burn the same sky in exactly the same way. Like this, this image here are actually two negatives. I did like a Jerry Yulesman where I, the bottom is one image and it, at that day it had no cloud at all. It was just flat. And I just didn't like how that, you know, that white top. And I wanted to put, uh, I wanted to have more clouds in there. So I burned in from another negative, the sky in the dark room, not in camera. And it wasn't sandwiched. It, I had it in two different holders. Hmm. I had two different negative holders and I, and I burned the bottom. So I never get it the same. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. You know, that's, uh, that we're all individual. Yeah, Jim is also saying he's talked to other photographers who were in painting first. They seem to use light very differently. Has your painting changed how you create your images? Or do you even know because you, it's the way you did it? You know, I haven't painted since I uh, picked up photography again. So <laughs> I don't know if it, if it has changed, but it's all the same. I think it's when you have a certain aesthetic in mind, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's an, um, an image or if it's if it's a, a photograph or a painting you want to create uh, that and that's I guess what I want to say is that painting has taught me more about photography in that way because I know that I can change an image that I can play with it you know add a little here take a little make a little light there and that's just that's more like painting mm -hmm. so painting has definitely influenced my photography more than the other way around. And a couple of people have asked me in private chat if there's a schedule for when the Kim Weston book is supposed to be published. Whoa, uh, uh, 22. Okay. But uh, we are uh, almost ready and we need to send out uh, packages and uh, but it's, we're still in uh, revisions and um, we want to send it out. Are you self-publishing or do you have a publisher or? Self-publishing. Nice. Yeah. 
it's going to be in a portfolio box uh, with two original prints. One, uh, um, one of Kim's prints and one of Edward's negatives that Kim printed. Would would that be the back window of Karis sitting by the? It's yes, it is. Yes, with the with the slippers on on the deck next to her there. I think so. I, yeah. I okay. Go back to it, but yeah. yeah. I think that's the one he's allowed to print. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yes, she did say self-published. Correct. Yes. Yes. So David just joined us here. We're, um, we're at the top of the hour. We're almost done, actually. I'm sorry you got in here late, but um, if you have other questions you want to ask right now, please jump in with them. The uh, Weston book, are you also editing, uh, picking, selecting, rejecting photographs and, and ordering them? Yes. Sequencing is quite a job. <laughs> How do you yes. do that with that many images? Well, they most of them were selected already when I got the project, but I I would uh, take the flow um, of it or suggest another image or say we need something here, and and he completely trusts me in that. Does seem like a very very big ponderous job. I mean, it is. Uh, I've been working on it for a year. With 400 and plus images, it's hard to print them out and just place them on the floor and look at them. Well, it's 400 all. pages. There's even there's more images than that. He, he's wow. prolific. I mean, he's just oh, he's paying at sets and everything else. You know, there's yeah. and his creative process, how he shares it in this book is, is just is amazing. I, I just keep uh, being amazed by it. You'll have to let us know when it's available for order. Yeah, I will. I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You find yourself thinking that perhaps you should um, shoot more uh, because of this, um, because of his productivity of shooting. Oh, please! I, I'm in awe. I mean, I can't. I mean, the the man. I mean, there's so much, uh, so many images that he has, and uh, to build the sets, and he he goes all out, like like my daughter, kind of, you know, like building scaffolding and all that I, I don't think that i would ever go that far but shooting more to be inspired to shoot more def most definitely yes i do want to shoot more um and usually uh you know i'm here on the west coast i have a lot of uh places i can go and and shoot right up front here um but um i there's a lot of places in the world i want to visit and i want to go to scotland next so whoever is here from scotland i that's my next, that's actually a destination I wanted to do last year. And then we ended up doing Holland instead. Yeah, I don't know if Martin's still here, but he's in Northern Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so anybody so else have a question I could answer? Yeah, now's your chance, speak up. <laughs> you just wanna to go to Scotland for the whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, they do have good whiskey. Cool. Well, I want to thank everyone. Um, Jeff I, Siwi says, slow down. <laughs> I um, said, I'm envious of you still shooting uh, Hasselblad um, and Triax. Uh, I, I would love to just go back to doing that. Why? Can. <laughs> can. It's, it's uh, you know, I. What's stopping you, Ian? Uh, probably just doing it, <laughs> you know, I just, you know, seeing the camera, the right camera at the right price would probably make just the difference in doing it. <laughs> I would love to actually get a, uh, an old Leica, the one that is a pain in the ass to load. And I had a, a 3F at one point, and I really love that camera. I love the lenses, um, but, um, uh, you know, uh, in the whole effort to uh, uh, do stuff more efficiently and faster. But the thing that I, I noticed Bridget uh, saying is the whole thing about slowing down. Well, there is a whole con consumer trend of, of slowing down. I, I put the link in there on the, the chat. Mm -hmm. um, slow living, the backlash against speed. Everything is so damn fast that you have to make a concerted effort 
to actually put on the brakes and slow down. And I see, you know, uh, Bridget's uh, analog photography is her attempt at slowing down. She could do stuff a lot faster and easier um, if she was doing it digital. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, uh, I also remember the old days of sitting in the dark room, you know, agitating the film, um, accidentally drinking Rapid Fixer. <laughs> <laughs> And liking it. Huh? Well, that, that explains you know, things. It didn't do anything to me. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the, the, I do kind of miss the nostalgia. Um, and one of the things that I'm doing for my upcoming conversation with John is, is going through and, and um, uh, scanning a bunch of my old work. Uh, and scanning is a pain in the ass. I don't <laughs> love the process of scanning. Um, but uh, oh, thank you. One of the things I'm I'm finding prints and I'm looking at the at the prints. It's like I don't remember making that and and feeling nostalgic about spending time in the dark room. But if I stop and think about it, then I remember the stink, the smell, um, the long and time and in the dark room. And how about your fingernails turning brown because of the developer? No, no, I was, I, I didn't, I didn't use fingers. I used tongs. Oh, well, you know, okay. I, I <laughs> used my entire <laughs> hand <laughs> in the developer <laughs> to, to bring up a, a certain, you know, density. That Bridget, explains are, a lot. Are, do you, do you use your hands or tongs? Hands. Oh, her or me? Her. I don't <laughs> care about you. Oh, um, yeah, you do. <laughs> well, I use, I use tongs. And yeah. I, especially the only time I, I use fingers is when I'm trying to do a hot develop to, um, uh, you know, putting my finger in, in very strong developer and then uh, hot developing the print. And then your finger that. didn't get brown? Your fingernail didn't get brown? Let's well, not go I there. It off immediately. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you all for joining. On Thursday, my guest is going to be Peter Crow, the author of the damn book to talk about storing all your images and how do we archive things and hard drives versus raids and all that fun stuff. So I hope you can all join us on Thursday. Uh, Brigitte, do you have any final words you want to say to folks? Thanks all for joining. Uh, I, I love what I do and uh, I, I'm glad that there's so much interest. Yeah, and Carlos says you should go to visit him in Portugal uh, it's got lots of beautiful cliffs by the sea. Oh yes, I did shoot. I, I do have uh, a series uh, of Portugal. I haven't. I didn't put it up uh, on my website. I have, uh, of course, the Porto Bridge. A couple of those uh, images that. Uh, but bridges, you know, that's more architectural. I just did, the reason why I don't have it up is because it doesn't fit in with, with, with the work entirely. But uh, I, I do. I do enjoy. Um, Portugal a lot and thank you. Yes. Bridget, uh, do, do, do you sell your images online? I have people ask me to, to print things and uh, you know I've, I have I have them up. I, I, they're not in a store um, right now because I don't have a, a lot that I could sell. I'd have to print it on demand but uh, there's a price list on my website. And But, but do you have people that go to your website uh, and purchase it online from your website i don't have that set up no but uh if there's interest i would certainly okay do that yes well well thank you all again thank you john Thanks, for doing john. this and i'm sorry i came you. in late i just I, wanted oh, to say okay. um say hi to julie and thank you for her book because i it came i ordered the book Sorry. Actually, while <laughs> she you. was giving her discussion, then I ended up getting the book last week. And David, I sent you a link to where to find the, the recordings. Thank you. Thank you. I, Brigitte, I, I hope to talk to you. Hope to talk to you soon. Great. David, we'll, we'll do. Um, I do have a, a book that uh, that's on uh, print on demand at Blurb. It's quite expensive, but I had several people ask me for a uh, uh, a signed copy. I don't have any more, but they can be um, they can be ordered. If I can find the link, I'll I'll put it in the in the chat. Well, send it send it to me, and I'll put it in the description of the link. 
when you say the book is expensive, give, give me an idea what what expensive is for the book. It's a hundred dollars just uh, without without me making any profit, and it's not that many pages. It's basically the the slideshow that I showed. All those images are in it. The so cover cool. of uh, as above, so below. That's actually the the cover of the book. And you self published, right? Yes, it's just a print on demand now. Um, that's I did it for the sh when I had the show two years ago. I had a few mm -hmm. copies in Carmel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love your work. I think it's it it resonates at such a deep level. It's, it's so beautifully executed and so sensitive. Thank you, David. Yes, David's also working on a show for the Harvey Milk Center. Uh, so we're going to be right. working with him. So we'll send you over a link. Uh, we're still it. living in a virtual virtual uh, surrealism, <laughs> I guess I'll call it that. Um, but John, thank you. Hats off to you for doing this too and, and sharing these things. Really great. Yeah, I can't wait till this COVID's over so I can get down to the Monterey yeah. area again to visit all the people there. I know, I know. Cool. Well, yeah, thank you all. Bye, John. We'll we'll have some coffee or. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you all.